and they're off in the Kentucky Oaks. I'm Jill Byrne alongside John Asher for the Kentucky Oaks. And, John, we haven't had a chance to really talk about the Phillies that yeah. much, but this is the one and only opportunity coming up this weekend for people to get in on a future, future wager yeah, on the Phillies. You know, it's, it's really timed well. It's scheduled well for the Oaks future wager because the, the Oaks picture develops a little later than the Derby yeah. picture. I think these horses can can blossom in, in February and early March and, and make it here on the first Friday of May to the Kentucky Oaks. So there are 23 Phillies in the Oaks future wager field, same rules as the Derby future wager, with one exception, wagering open. Opens on uh, Friday at noon, closes Sunday at 6:30 Six. Eastern. 30 okay, minutes, 630. 30 minutes past the uh, end of the Derby wager. If you if you feel like you got to look for one more bargain, <laughs> you got 30 minutes to do it. But 23 Phillies and the All Others Mutual Field, which is a three to one morning line favorite in the eyes of handicapper Mike Battaglia. Same number he uh, hung on the field in uh, in the Derby uh, two uh, future wager. So uh, the the All Others. It's a wide open Oaks picture, even even though the champion beholder is in this group. Right, and I don't think either one of us are really set mm -hmm. on her. So no. there's a couple other fillies, though, near the top of the list that we both like. One being unlimited budget. Mm -hmm. She won the Demoiselle. She came back with a huge effort in the Rachel Alexandra down at the fairgrounds for Todd Pletcher. I really like her. I like a filly that ran second to her in the Demoiselle and came back to win at Gulfstream, one of... How many in here for Bill Mott? And this yeah. is emollient, beautiful yeah. pedigree as well. And, you know, she was pretty close to unlimited budget in the Demoiselle. So I think she's one for Bill Mott. But there's a couple other that Bill have in there that, that you really like. Actually, Mott, who has never won a Kentucky Derby or a Kentucky Oaks, although oh, he's the all-time leading trainer at Churchill Downs, <laughs> he's got four fillies in this group. And they're all relatively unproven. And Molly, it's probably the, uh, as, as the biggest resume sure. with that good run. Uh, last year in the in the Demoiselle, but uh, he's got a filly named Close Hatches that kind of is, has, is one for one lifetime. Same for Calistoga, who could be one that goes a little shorter. And then uh, there's a filly named Flashy Gray uh, that, uh, that, impressive that winner at was a most impressive winner. So mm -hmm. these are all going to be developing fillies and, and fillies to watch. Uh, you talk about a limited budget. She's the daughter of Kentucky Derby winner Street Sense, and that Street Cry line has been incredibly, incredibly tough on this racetrack. I think uh, he may join the list of Foundation uh, Churchill Down sires that Jill and I like for horses that just run well over this track, but pure fun is, is an intriguing filly to me. Yeah. Ken McPeak had this filly last fall, thought she was a grass filly. I ran on a race on, uh, on uh, one of the Stars of Tomorrow days that uh, they wanted a grass race, ended up with her on the dirt, and she just ran away from the field, then came back three weeks later and, uh, and won, the, won the Starlet out, out at Hollywood California. Park and mm -hmm. came from out of the clouds to do that. She has not raced this year. Ken's bringing her back slowly. But uh, this filly was as impressive as any two-year-old I saw in Kentucky last year. She's the 10-to-1 co-favorite in this uh, pool along with unlimited budget. But I think bargains abound in this pool. We I think haven't even good. mentioned Dreaming of Julia oh, for absolutely. Todd Fletcher, who was a big second in her first mm -hmm. start back to Live Lively down at Gulfstream Park this weekend. And then what about the West Coast? I know we, neither one of us like Beholder. Mm -hmm. Bob Baffert's got quite a few out there. He has a filly who just broke her maiden, extremely impressive, Midnight Lucky mm -hmm. for uh, Mike Pagram, who we love to see here in the Kentucky Oaks. And he has executive privilege. I don't think we're sold on her either, but 50 Shades of Hay. Let's don't forget the best <laughs> name, the absolute best name of this year's group of fillies for Bob Baffert. Again, uh, Pegram has uh, an ownership in this one. She's been real impressive. And Bob is saying this filly acts like a Kentucky Oaks filly. I'm, I'm making her today the 3-5 to five favorite on the Oaks Day <laughs> infield, 50 Shades of Hay. But she's a, a filly with some, uh, some talent. I, I think one other filly to look at in here is uh, if you're looking for a price in this pool, just because she really had no chance to win the last race is, is the uh, Dale Romans filly. Uh, Private, Private Ensign. Ensign. Private Ensign mm -hmm. finished third uh, behind uh, Live Lively. We ran a super race and, and uh, Dreaming of Julia, who's the runner-up in the Devon and Dale. At, uh, but, but this filly ran on late. Well, again, had no chance with her running style to win there. Mile and eighth at Churchill Downs on the first uh, Friday of May. Might be something to look at. She's 30 to 1 in the morning line. So that's a little bit about the Phillies. Again, the one and only opportunity for the future wager this weekend for the Kentucky Oaks. For John Asher, I'm Jill Byrne. Good luck in the Kentucky Oaks future wager.